So here we are at Seedfest 2023. Looking forward to going in and seeing what's here. So here we are, we arrived at Synthfest. Um, we're going to go and check out the uh, Coke, Yamaha and the main room behind me there. Absolutely packed full of gear and synths. I've already seen a few people uh, from the synth community, so let's go and have a look around. Uh, looks like a Mellotron. Let's go and have a look at that. So look, what is this to the Mellotron? So it's uh, it's a digital recreation. It's using sample sound banks rather than yeah. the original kind of tape play flags, but it's uh, it's based off the original tape recordings. So yeah. it's got high level of authenticity to the original sound. Yeah, it's got that kind of direct connection to the sound like you would have with the yeah. actual instrument. So you've got in there like the original the original samples in there, like the tape flutes and all that. Yeah. I think very familiar from Pink Floyd to Beatles, all yeah. the things we know. Um, this is a super compact version, so yeah. it's kind of a handy, handy one for less space, but you get the full size M4000, which is probably originally the really bad. Yeah. You know, very like playing what you would have, what you had yeah. in the I mean, that's, that's the thing. This is unlike a sampler, just doing it on your PC or whatever. You've got the actual controls on there, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. So I think it's just the immediacy of being able to dial up yeah. the sounds, tweak it, kind of blend between the different sound banks. Yeah, it's just a joy to yeah. play, really. It's really fun. And what's the retail on the? So this, uh, the micro goes for 1034 Yeah. We've got its own price for that, yeah. Excellent, thanks. Well, I'll have a play with it. Excellent. Have fun. I collect all the synthesizers and restore them. Right. Um, so um, the CX5M was one I bought off Venia in his free music auction yeah. um, a few years ago. And I finally decided to switch it on like, two days ago. <laughs> and it worked. Um, yeah, and it's, it's running MSX, isn't it? The operating system. It's the MSX operating system, so it's Microsoft. Uh, it's got a, the YM2151, I think, four operator FM module symphony. Yeah. That's a synth module there. Yeah. And um, that's got MIDI in and out as well. And then you're plugging cartridges to yeah. load the software. Yeah. So it was mainly using like education, wasn't it? It was a, it was a, a young person. Yeah. But, but it got more sophisticated because they built cartridges like you could edit DX7 yeah. and things like that when there yeah. weren't that many computers around, everyone was running MS DOS. Yeah. And you yeah. didn't have a graphical interface to. to yeah, interface. it's a really good way to get into, into it. And you could do like it's a complete studio thing and then with, with, with all the other things that you've got here. Well, this has got the, uh, the matching keyboard, uh, yeah. uh, which has got a weird interface that's got, uh, like a parallel interface that plugs into yeah. the side. So uh, it gives you get more flexibility. Uh, but it's a nice weighted, it's not weighted, I mean, a nice feel to the keyboard. Yeah. It's very playable. It's, it's so easy. It takes seven seconds to beat up from power on. Yeah, that's pretty bad. That's even more, more than PC, you'd be lucky to get that. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, um, probably, what I think it's a Z80 microprocessor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, probably two megahertz, or what's one, four megahertz. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's um, they're very, it's still available. You can get them on the uh, eBay flat, three of the four with red sort of things. I mean, there is a big um, retro computer community, and I've got a Spectrum that I used to use. I've still got my Spectrum, but you don't see as many of these around, but they are a really interesting uh, bit of kit. Well, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do with this now, you can get the ROMs online. So I'm going to make some of my own cases and PCs right. and blow yeah. it on ROMs. So they can have all the ROMs that go with it. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, so you can get them for drum synths and you get them for all the different, and they, um, the different, some of the different modules. So you can then sequence them as well. Yes. So it'd be nice to be able to play with the parameters on a DX7 which yeah. green. Yeah, it would be So you see, so is that what you do? You repair and, and build synths? My hobby, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was a telecoms engineer, but I retired five, six years ago. And uh, I like just like making, I'm a maker. Yeah. 
I like making it. I mean, you've got some brilliant stuff here. I mean, I'm just having a look. You've got the RX-5, which I've got my own. I've still got my RX-5. I like it. It's a great machine. But you've got the big DX7 rack there. Yeah. Or the deep, big DX rack. The TX-HL2 on top. Yeah. This is a rack mount DX5 or DX7. Yeah. You've got the uh, DX5, DX88, and the DX7 yeah that's pretty it's a it's an 80s yamaha studio it's a <laughs> yamaha corner yeah it's actually fantastic yeah. yeah i guess it takes some work to keep these up and running all the time yeah. well i've got to go through that and replace a lot of the capacitors because the age yeah the power supply and stuff like that um but yeah it's a, i know it literally doing panel beams and shit on the metal on the yeah. case because someone had heavy dropped it on one end and bent all the metal work yeah but it's brilliant. I really like what you've got what you've got going here. So where can people find you if they want to leave phone? Well, I, I mean, best place is on the the Mod Wiggler forums. I'm on Magman on the Mod Wiggler forums. Excellent. Well, thanks for that. Yes, yeah, so it's a multi timbral instrument. So we've got 12 tracks and each one can contain a sound. Yeah. And then on the blue buttons, the tracks, you can add a fix at that level. So you can add reverb and hit depth and chorus. And we've got a note filter as well. You can add. And then in each one of these sounds, and then of course they can all listen to different mini channels. Yeah. In each one of those, you drill down and then in this one, there's just one partial, but you can have 12 partials and they can be layered in terms of how hard you hit the keyboard, or they could be uh, layered, they could come in over time. The partials yeah. do different things. They can all contain multiple samples, so they can be layers of samples, or they can be um, additive sounds, waveforms, uh, subtractive sounds, or hybrids, really yeah. synthesized sounds. And then they can have an amount of FM. Which again could be configurable depending on pressure or capacity and stuff like that. So that's these guys. And then of course we've got a library of presets. And in fact we've got some artwork that shows you uh, the different people that design our presets. Oh, so right. some sort of, yeah, it's like a CD album. Yeah, so yeah. we've got a um, different sort of character or personality to each one of those sounds and up uh, with all the samples and presets you've also got three thousand sounds. But um, with all the capability, of course, to design your own sounds, it's not just a preset machine. So what's nice with it being a partial system is you can kind of copy and paste the partials from certain ones you like and then blend yeah, them in different yeah. ways. And sometimes you come up with nonsense and sometimes yeah. you come up with a really good sound. So um, very quick to copy and paste things with this. And then stuff can be easily MIDI linked. So, uh, you know, It's actually quite loud. Yeah. So I can press the MIDI button on the volume and then I'll press it one more time to get a green bar and let's just put it on that one. So now oh. I can reduce the volume. Right, so it's learned the MIDI learn, yeah, it's learned the parameters so your controller can yeah, yeah do what you need. And it's going up to 127 to zero. Yeah. So in that case I just change it to track volume. I could do the next one to track pan. Well, let's do the one at the top of it. Does that make sense? Let's try it there. So let's see if that works. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it hasn't got like a million knobs and, and yeah. sliders, but quite quick to map everything. And then you just save that within a session or or, yeah, you say in a session that you're working and you can recall that next I'll be working on that set of sounds you do that for all 12 sounds or I could map something to do the volume on all of it for, for right. example or just certain ones um, quite quickly uh, certainly when you use the R method and it figures out whether this is an absolute encoder or whether it's yeah. a relative encoder and so this one I obviously thought was a relative one so it figures that out for you and then you can do things like make complicated uh, modulator mappings for uh, pedals, mod wheels, stuff like that. You can map to any of these parameters, the partial parameters, and then there's crossfaders as well. So all these partials can be crossfaded in and out of keyboard range or again lost storage and stuff like that. So I can show you some examples of that. Yeah. So if I go back to my 
No, I agree. I'm going to go up to one that I've never done. So, yeah, Born Orchestra, where's that? Have you seen that? So on here, uh, you'll see the mod wheel. So if I play something, I'll just bring in more sounds with the mod wheel. Oh, I see, yeah. yeah. And it's done smoothly because you can affect, change the curves and stuff like that. Yeah. So you can, you can be ever messing around with it until it, it pleases your eyes and your ears. Yeah. yeah. So that's another use of all of these partials. And it, this has its genesis with the original Synclavia. Yeah, it's certainly got the DNA of the original one. If yeah. you look over there, that's the um, schematic. And that's pretty much unchanged from the original. Yeah. And it is the original code, the original code that was used in it. We've added some more things, obviously like a bit of depth, a bit of a brush, the filter, the note filter, um, and uh, reverb algorithm we've added. Uh, but some of the sounds in our 3000 odd presets are from the original machine. They still sound great. Yeah. There's, there's some noise dithering and things like that. There's some techniques we added to make it sound as close to the original hardware as we do. Yeah. Um, the hardware is still in use today. about 200 people still using the original one. But, um, you know, obviously there's going to be fewer and fewer. Uh, yeah, 40 years old now. Yeah. Uh, take a lot of time and patience and stuff to keep them going. So our customer base from that product is now starting to migrate to yes. where they wanted a hardware product. They already, already had the Arturia V collection and our uh, iPad app, but now for hardware and hands on approach. This, this looks um, a real solid piece of kit as well. It's not, you know, it's, yeah. it's designed for the uh, well, professional we, musicians, millimeter. Aluminium or aluminum all round, and um, yeah, uh, all of the stuff we've used like new trick, trick collectors, and uh, we just use high quality parts, yeah, all the way through. So that hopefully this will last 40 years, you know. That's fantastic. So, uh, where, where to get more information on this? Straight to our website, and if you scan that one. You'll, you'll get the QR code there, but it's straight on the website, simply You're welcome, thank you. So, we've just come down to Korg here and I've, I, I recognise the voice and then the face, uh, oscillator scene. So, I follow your YouTube channel and uh, that's why we've got a Korg, Mobwave and other ones. So, how did you get into doing all these, these videos about these Korg synths and the real deep dives on them? Uh, well, the, the channel started with some uh, bad doorless jams, frankly, uh, that I started doing because I owned a bunch of synths. Uh, but didn't do anything with them, and I was sort of mid 30 and sort of it looked like a midlife crisis. <laughs> so I started doing that as a kind of accountability. Yeah. Um, but my plan in life was always to, to be a music teacher, and I fell into a completely different career. Uh, and so I think it was Beat Step Pro had a firmware update, and I was just like, oh, these are some really interesting features, I'll talk about them and lots of people came to that video and I realised, okay, well perhaps I can talk about stuff yeah. rather than, uh, than, than make so much music that no one's listening to, I guess. Uh, and I just like doing really technical yeah. stuff, basically. I mean, the, the ones on the Op6 as well, particularly, I think it, it, it's the deep dive, isn't it? I mean, I do some Vons kind of like how to get started, but you've really gone into like, you could actually build an oscillator on the Op6, yeah. that one, you know, it's really yeah, deep. Yeah, yeah. Is, there, is it Korg stuff you, you, you really do, or is it just whatever you've got? I, I, I do whatever I've got, but on the case of the Op6, it's, it's a massively powerful synthesis engine. It, it feels like a, a synth that was designed by people who really have, really love synthesis. As that really appealed to me because you can, I like making synths do what they're not meant to do. Yeah. But on the Op6, it's kind of meant to do anything that you want it to do, which is just really, really exciting to me. So that's why I went in really deep with that. 
um, yeah so that was just one that I really loved um, and the mod wave as well especially the, the sequencer it's quite esoteric in the way that I really yeah. dig that kind of stuff yeah and that's why I found the mod wave it's, it's not a sequence like on the say um, Minilog it's yeah. something else but it's very powerful yeah. So, so what are you here doing here today at Silkfest? I'm literally just coming here and just having a little chat yeah. to people that I haven't seen for a while because I don't get to leave the house for often. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. No, the phone. I might take some pictures for Instagram, but I'm not doing any radios. No, right no radios. I'm just here to, to basically do whatever. So, so and what's on your, your your shopping list? Of I I don't know yet because I haven't gone into the big room. <laughs> But we'll we'll see. I might I might treat myself to something. I haven't decided yet. Well, it, it was really great to, great to meet you. I really enjoyed it. So uh, thanks for doing your channel. I really love it. And uh, I'll include a link to your channel on, on the video. Thanks. <laughs> And I'll let you try and guess the name of the TV show. Hopefully, those of us old enough to know will remember it. And fingers crossed, this all works. So this theme show, or this theme song to this show was written on the White House system. And in fact, the first two seasons of the show, the title music was completely White House. I think season three, they eventually got a budget big enough to get some real musicians in. So fingers crossed, this will all work. And see if you can uh, remember what this piece of music was. sound but it uses some of the modules that dedicated to do a simulated reaper tail. investigating as FM evolved into more complicated systems. So for those of you who know your uh, FM history, after the DX72, we went into the SY series. Synthfest 2023, really enjoyed the day, lots of good content there, great to have hands on with some of the kit and see some of the older kit as well which I really enjoyed. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>